everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Heather Lindsay and I'm so happy that you landed on this video. I don't think it's by chance that the Lord sent you here. And the Lord gave me this word um, just earlier today and that is the question to you is have you forgotten your first love? Your first love is Jesus, right? The one who died for your sins, the one that cares so much about you, the one that has a plan for your life. Sometimes we get so caught up in the distractions and so overwhelmed by everything that's going on in this earth that we literally have pushed God out of the way because we need to go act. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe different things have happened to you. Maybe you and your boyfriend broke up. Maybe you and your spouse are fighting really bad. Maybe you're trying to figure out this new normal and you don't know what is happening and you feel like, God, like I don't have time. <laughs> like God, I love you. I, I, I care for you, but I am out here like fighting and dealing with the stuff that's in this world. And I ask you today, have you gotten so entangled in the word, in the world that you no longer are in this word? It's so important that you stay close to God and that you don't get caught up in the distractions and that you pull away from social media. Do you know how violent social media is right now? Especially with this cancel culture. I'm going to cancel you. I'm going to cancel. Since when is, where is God's word? What does what God's word say about that? Right? Like God's word talks about um, abiding in him and, and overcoming evil with good and, and, and not repaying evil for evil and loving people unconditionally. Love is patient. It's kind. It's not boastful. It's not proud. It's not rude. We know what the word of God says, but the culture is taking over some of you. Even as you watch this, you love gossip all of a sudden. You love slander because what happens when you get stuck in the house for a period of time, you're not at church, you're not hanging out with other believers, you're quarantined, you're stuck to yourself, and now you have become filled up with all of these things in this world. Your Bible studies are turning into gossip sessions on your Zoom, right? And when you do get together in small groups, you find yourself complaining and you're not happy. And let me tell you this. What is happening is what you've planted on the inside of you is coming out of you. Now, you have an opportunity during a quarantine or during these hard times. Ask yourself, what are you putting on in on the inside of you? I'm thankful for this quarantine. I've learned so much. I learned to pull back. I learned I was way too busy beforehand. I was on the road right before the whole quarantine happened. I was on the road. I was in seven states in seven days. <laughs> now my schedule is, is open. You know what I mean? I'm still really busy. But now I adjust things where I stop working at a certain time for real. I'm spending more time with my family. My daughter just painted my nails. Don't look too close. <laughs> so it's like I'm finding these times to, to spend time with my family and pull away. I'm reading more books. I'm, I'm exercising every single day. I'm more intentional about my food. You can come out of this bitter or you can come out of this better. But is, does, is your first love this word or is this culture completely pulled you away from what God says in his word? I know you like gossip. I know you like slander. <laughs> but you have to ask yourself why. What on the inside of me likes it? And if you can be very real, you can be very honest with yourself. It feels good to you to, to, to take down other people because you don't love yourself and you don't feel good about you. And because you don't feel good about you, then it feels better to tear down other people because it... it you just don't feel good about yourself. But that's not going to change anything. It's not going to make you better. You've got to guard your heart from that stuff. I had somebody send me some gossip and I said, don't send me that. I said, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about that person's life. I don't even know that person. I don't even know if it's even true. People make up lies about me online all the time. I'm sure you've seen them before. I don't engage in that stuff. I don't entertain that stuff. You want to know why? Because I'm not entangled in the affairs of the world. I'm not entangled with the civilians of the world. You got to go higher. When your first love is Jesus, you want to seek him and live for him with your whole heart and your whole life. Your whole, your mindset is on his word. Your mindset is of how can I bring people into the knowledge of Jesus Christ? How can I help people? I can't control what other people say, but you better believe I can control my own life. I'm going to make sure that I'm in line with this word at all times. I believe that God can show people much better than I can. So when people try to bring mess to me, don't bring me that mess. I guard my heart from gossip and slander. I guard my heart from drama and conflict and mess. I'm not going to entertain that mess. I'm higher than that. Soldiers in the army of the Lord don't get entangled in the affairs of this earth. Have you gotten entangled? 
Have you gotten entangled? When you're going out and protesting, are you yelling at people and arguing with people that are different than you? Are you are you a Christian? Are you a believer? Are you going to them and saying, hey, can I pray for you? Because obviously, if they're racist and they're yelling at folks and they're going crazy, then they hate themselves. That's the fruit, a symptom of, of them hating themselves is hating other people because of the color of their skin, which is wrong. Racism is wrong. White supremacy is wrong. But you're not going to, the thing is this, this is what you have to understand. In order to change this world, people have, your heart has to be changed. You can pass all the laws that you want, but if your heart doesn't get changed, if that's the case, my husband always says this, then we want to break the law when we're in speed. You know what I mean? It says 70, but you're going to push about 85. And if you see a cop, you're going to push on that break. You can pass all the laws you want, but if people don't take, if people don't, work on their own heart and let God change their heart. It's going to be the same. So if, as you're coming and as you're going and you're starting wars with people online, and trust me, I've seen people that I went to high school with, and mind you, I went to an all-white school, saying, you know, certain things that really rile me up. Because I'm like, you are wrong. You don't even know what you're saying. You sound racist. And I am ready to go off on them. But I realize, okay, first they're not saved. Am I being a good example for Christ right now? Maybe I should, if I, the Bible says if I have an issue with, with somebody, you got to pull them to the side, right? So I said, let me just slide in their DM and explain to them their perspective because maybe they just don't know. Let me have some hard conversations because they just don't know. You see, I'm not like this world. And you got to remember, you're not like this world. If you're a believer, well, the real believers, please stand up. Because some of y'all are finding way too much joy. You're, you're jumping on the bandwagon Especially every on Twitter every other day is a new new person canceled, new person canceled. You can't cancel somebody that you didn't create, baby. Unless you can created them, then even your child, you can't cancel your child because you didn't create them. God did, right? What makes us think that we are higher than we ought to? What makes us think that we can? Oh yeah, I, you know I you know I'm not going to support you. It's fine. You didn't support. You probably didn't support that person anyways. Is your heart set on the things of God? I love John 15 and 4. I just preached on this this past weekend. But it, God says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. It's a cause and effect. Abide in me and I will abide in you. And, when, and, and, and God, is, God is saying, I will make my home in you. When you're abiding in God, that means that there's a rules that you got to stick to to be a believer. I know people don't like rules. Rules are religious. No, there's still a boundary it's accepting what the Father says about you. It's submitting your life to his word, this word. It's losing your life so that you may pick up your real life, which is in this word and in this Bible. And I know this is not a popular topic and this is not exciting, but the good news is I don't post for likes and comments. Come on. I post because the Lord tells me to post. I record videos because the Lord tells me to. And people tell me, Heather, you're just too deep. You're too deep. You know what? It's okay. I live for an audience of one. Whether people love me or hate me, I'm going to keep doing what God wants me to do. And no person on this earth will ever stop that. Come on. You've got to understand when you're not entangled, when you're submitted to your first love, when you want to be obedient to whatever God wants you to do, when you want to stay faithful to whatever he wants you to do, when you're abiding in him, I abide in him. He makes his home in me. The thing is, the human will has something to do with abiding. The word of God says, abide in me, John 15, 4, and I will abide in you. There's an order that takes place when you are abiding in him. When you're abiding in him, you take on the mind of Christ. Are you taking on the mind of Christ in your everyday life, with your job, with your family, with your life? Do you think about God? Do you think about God? Is this pleasing to you? I want you to make your home in me. I want to make sure I'm worshiping you and living for you in every single way. In everything that I do, I want to make sure I'm being honest and, and trustworthy. And I'm, I'm doing what I do is on to, to you, Lord. That is on to my flesh. Is not as on to myself. And what's happening is people's flesh are running rampant on this earth right now. If you feel like doing it, you just do it. Don't do that. It's time for us to turn around. And be honest with our life and be honest with ourselves. I like Revelation um, 2 and da, 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 4. This is Jesus talking. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look at how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. 
if you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Come on. Look how far you're falling. What happened? You used to love Jesus so much. It used to just be all about him and all for him. Did something happen to you along the way? Did you get hurt along the way that hardened your heart towards God and now you have a cold heart and now you're attacking Christians and yelling at other people and clapping back online and cussing everybody out? What happened to you along the way? You've lost your first love. Some of us are acting like tomorrow is not promised. It's not promised to you. You don't have tomorrow. And you're going to be judged on every idle word that you speak on this earth. Every tweet, every post, every word you tell that family member, every time you tear down that coworker, every time you're going to be judged on every idle word. In, in Revelations 2 and 5 is saying, look how far you fall and return back to your first love. It's time to return back. You've gotten too far away from me. You've gotten away from the Father. It's time to come back to me. It's time to get refocused on what I need you to do. I have a call for you. I'm telling you, next year, we're going to see a harvest from this year. A harvest spiritually. What you've planted this year is going to harvest. So for those of you that have planted gossip and lies and slander and tearing everybody down and cussing everybody out and just, tear, just being hateful, you're going to see a harvest of that. Do you understand that? You're going to see a harvest. But for those that have been living for Jesus and doing what he wants you to do, and maybe you even lost your job, but you said, no, I'm going to stick to the promises of God. My God shall provide all my needs according to his riches and glory. My God is not surprised by what's happening in this world. Maybe your marriage is struggling and you're like, no, I'm going to stick to this word because I abide in him and he abides in me and he makes his home in me. It's not going to, people, it's not going to be popular. Everybody's not going to like you. When you're doing it God's way. But what is your other option? Are you trying to please a bunch of people that will never be satisfied? You'll never be able to please the mob. You won't. So don't even try. Don't even try. Do what you do because you love Jesus. Yeah, your husband might be turning up. <laughs> what you gonna do? Yo, clap back. I'm about to leave my marriage. 80% a great man, that 20% drives you up the wall, but you about to leave your whole good godly man because he don't do a couple things that you want him to do. So then you go try to go find a 20 and you had a whole 80%, right? And you go find a 20 and you realize that you depended on your spouse for your happiness and God is trying to show you that contentment and happiness starts in you, not in another person. Come on. So these are the things I want you to remember. The first thing is I want you, first step is remember your first love. God is saying, remember, remember that time you first got saved and gave your life to Jesus, how on fire you were, how you were always at every single Bible study, how you were up at 3 a.m. to prayer, to pray or 6 a.m. or whatever. You just loved Jesus. You read his word. You read books. You were so excited about the things of God. You were so ready to change. You, so, you fasted. You just loved the Lord. It was like you and him. It was so beautiful. Remember that. Get back to that. Remember when you were kicking in your blood, when you were a mess, when you were so far from God and he chose you and he called you out of the pit of hell and he saved you. Remember that. Get back to that. I remember when I first got saved, I actually got to preach at the very church where I first got saved this past weekend. And I'll be uploading that video too. But I just remember, I remember walking down to that altar and giving my life to Jesus. And I was just so excited. I just... Uh, I wasn't excited. I was excited, but I was so broken. And I remember how God just lifted me up and gave me this un, this just this amazing peace that I never had before. And He just set me on and put this fire in me to live for Him. I'm like, Lord, I declare that fire will never burn out. I've been saved for 17 years, and that fire is only getting bigger. And it will never be quenched by this world. You want to know why? Because this world didn't give it to me. I let, I let go of my life a long time ago. Are you listening to me? I've let go of my reputation a long time ago. I gave that to Jesus. Jesus was of no reputation. And I strive to be of no reputation. <laughs> I strive to be of no reputation. I do what I do because I love my heavenly father. And I want to serve him with my whole heart and my whole life. I remember when he saved me, when he chose me, when I was 
in my dysfunction, he said, you, I have appointed you to the nations. I've appointed you to preach the gospel of Jesus. Millions of people will come into the knowledge of who I am through the ministry that I'll give you and your husband. Heather, I appointed you. You see, he appointed me. He chose me. No human did that. And no human appointed you. You may have gotten a promotion on your job, but let me tell you, God was behind the scenes working that out in your favor. That wasn't you. I know you think it's you. I think it's your hard work, and I'm sure your hard work is great and has a part to play in it, but it's God that opens and closes our doors. You can't take credit for that. I can't take credit for that. It's God that adds to your numbers, not you. Come on, you can create all the content you want to try to get all the followers you want to get everybody to like you, but if your hope is in that, when all of that crashes, then what happens? What happens if social media is just erased? Would you still remain faithful to God or are you still focused on trying to get people to like you? <laughs> Let me tell you this. I read this study. It said 10% of the people that you meet throughout your whole life, whether you meet them or not, they're not going to like you. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with what is going on in the inside of them. It is not a reflection of you when people attack you. It's a reflection of them. You just keep doing what God wants you to do. You keep living for him. You stay focused on him. Don't get caught up in this world. This world is always going to have something to say. Remember your first love. Stay focused on what God wants you to do. You can't control everything as much as we want to. We like control, right? It feels good. It feels good to our flesh. But God is saying, let go of the control and remember your first love. And remember that I have called you for such a time as this. The second part is repent of your sins. Repent. When you say repent, it means turn around, go into a new direction, go a new way. Come on. Come on. Repent of your sins. Turn around and go in a new direction. I love, I love that every single night before I go to bed, I say, Lord, I repent of all of my sins, known and unknown. I want to make sure that I'm not hardened towards you. I don't have a cold heart. And if you've got a cold, hard heart towards God, repent. Be like, God, I repent. I'm sorry. But every night, this is what I like to do in my life. I like to judge my own heart and my own life and say, okay, God, whew, I could have been a little nicer to, you know, the girl at and You know what I mean? I got a little impatient or, you know... Whatever the area is, that's just an example. Maybe you were driving and you beat really hard at somebody and yelled at them and been like, what are you doing? Just go to God and repent. God, I repent for all of my sins known and unknown. I want to make sure that I remain sensitive to your spirit and sensitive to what you want me to do because I abide in you. And I know unforgiveness will keep me from doing what you have called me to do. Unforgiveness will keep you from doing what God, who do you need to forgive tonight? Or today, who do you need to forgive? Who do you have all against? Do you need to let him go? Do you know you give Satan legal right to mess with you? Spiritually, you give him an open door to come into your house and torment you because you're in unforgiveness. Who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to let go? You gotta let him go. Don't let him overwhelm you. You gotta let him go. And the third part, is we're going to return. So we're going to remember, we're going to repent, we're going to return to our first love. And what does that look like? Running to sit at the feet of the Father. God, just, I'm running back to your feet, man. I need you to lead me. You created me. You know me. You're the potter. I'm the clay. Tell me what to do. Tell me where I need to go. Tell me what I need to do. And people are like, oh, that's so deep. It don't take all that. But it does. And I think some people have a hard time with this because you're like, Heather, you're just too hard. And it feels like the life that you live is too hard. And it just seems like it's, I feel like it's easier to compromise. Of course it is. It's a difference between you being a cheap, exp cheap utensil to being an expensive utensil. Cheap plastic utensils get thrown away. But there's something about those expensive utensils that have been refined, that have been pruned, that God is going to use them in a great way. And I want to be an expensive utensil. I'm going to tell you, your girl is going to be expensive. And it's not saying, I'm saying, oh, I'm perfect and I live this whole perfect life. That's not even true. But I do not pursue Sue Sin. I do not pursue the things that the world does. And I never have. And come on. And I never will. Ain't no scandals. Ain't no ever going to be no scandals that are true about me. And I can assure you, I would let y'all know if there was some scandal I felt like y'all needed to hear about. Because the enemy's goal is to discredit the preacher. Because if, if they, listen, if you can discredit the preacher, you're not going to listen to them. You're not going to hear them because in your head, you think of the scandal. Child, ain't going to ever be no scandals over here. I will let y'all know if there is one. I will come right on here and say, you guys, I have fallen. I have messed up. But I have not. Come on. 
Come on, somebody. I have not. And I and my heart is always to serve God. My heart is always to do what the kingdom of God wants. I abide in him and he abides in me. And what does that mean? You're going to get attacked. People are going to say things. People are going to lie about you. They've been lying about me since I started in ministry, even before I got in ministry. But my focus isn't on them. I'm going to keep doing what God wants me to do. And he keeps on increasing me. He keeps on busting open doors. So he keeps on doing what he needs to do. And there's a difference. There's two people in this world. There's a type of person that is starting conflict and drama and they'll stay there their whole entire life because they won't grab a hold of this message and realize they need to change. Or there's the person getting talked about. Come on. That's going to keep on going higher because the greater one lives on the inside of them. And the thing is, how can you walk to walk together unless they agree? And for some of y'all, you proclaim that you're a Christian. You love Jesus and you live for him. But... But you're serving Satan on this earth. You're making decisions based on what he wants you to do. A kingdom divided against itself will not stand. And for me in my life, in this house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. Maybe it's a little bit of the Enneagram one in me. I like to keep the rules. I like to do what's right because it's right at all times. And I just, I'm going to keep, I'm going to stick to this word. This world is a hot mess right now. You can look around, you can turn on the news and see that see that it is. And honestly, I believe that the attacks against this earth, from police brutality to all these different things that are happening. I heard there's a new flu, you know, that's coming. There's a new, you know, whatever strand that's coming. It's going to keep coming, but I'm going to stay to the word. I'm going to stick to this word. This word will never fail me. This word will never forsake me. God will prepare me through this word for what is happening to come. And I'm going to keep on trusting in him and I'm going to stay focused on him. I'm going to abide in him. I'm going to every day remember. Um, I'm, going to re- I'm going to remember. I'm going to repent. And I'm going to return every single day. And I don't want you to think like, oh, this is something I do sometimes. No, this is, this is like daily. You know what I mean? Well, Heather, that's no fun. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, it's the, I, I, I truly believe in it. And I don't want you to think it's like works-based it's, it's like a surrender. It's like, all right, God, this is, this is how I feel. Like, th- and this was me. I was very lukewarm in my walk with the Lord for a couple years when I first got saved. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this part of the Bible, but I'm not like going to do the whole Bible, right? I only can do some of it. I can't really commit to this whole thing because it's like challenging me and would be somebody I don't want to be. And I really can't do that. I got to commit to like the whole thing of this word. Like I got to, I have to. Like I, I couldn't commit to it. And when I finally hit rock bottom again, and I really committed to this word, I lost my life. When you lose your life, you die to your old life. So it doesn't matter what happened to me before. That, that person's gone. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Come on, and all things are new. So I want to encourage you to return to your first love. Get back to that place of worship. Get back to that place where you're free from distractions. You guard your heart. You shut that stuff down. When people send you crap online, nope, I don't receive that. Nope, I can't accept that. No, I, no, I, I'm going to put my mask on. I'm going to believe the best. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. God wants you to do something in this season. He's speaking in this season. He's always speaking. He's always talking to you. But are you in a position to even hear it? Are you in a position to hear it? Are you so caught up in this world and what it's doing and what it's saying? Let's mow our own grass. Let's work on God. How can I change? How can I do better? How can I serve you with my whole heart in life? How can I please you? How can I just do what you want me to do? That's all that matters. That's all that's important. And then from there, I can go protest. And when I go to that protest, I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, have my sign. And as the Holy Spirit leads me, I'm going to go to that person. I'm going to preach the word of God to them and tell them my testimony, how God saved me. And I want to ask them if they're a believer and if they've been saved. And as I go to my job, I'm going to just be led by the Holy Spirit in every way. When I go home, I'm not going to transfer the poison of my frustrations in life onto my kids. And when I go online, I'm going to bring glory to the Father. My whole life is about bringing glory to the Father. That is what I'm about. That's it. That's what I'll ever be about for the rest of my life. I can assure you. When I was a sinner, I was a really good sinner. When I gave my life to Jesus, it was just all about him. And it always will be. And I want to encourage you to abide in him and let him live in you. Does he like living in you or does he want to get out? 
because you're grieving him over and over again with your life. I want to encourage you to repent right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are tuned in right now. God, I pray that we repent of our sins, known and unknown. We lay down at your feet every sin, every anything that's keeping us down, any sin that's weighing us down. We're stripping it off right now in the name of Jesus. I command depression to go in the name of Jesus. Doubt, fear, worry, anything that's keeping us from doing what you have called us to do. God, we're not like this world. We don't operate like this world. We're not going to think like this world. We're going to think on good things. We're going to believe the best. We're going to walk by faith. We're going to do what you want us to do because we're here for you and not for ourselves. Come on. We're not here for our flesh. We've died to our flesh. We've died to ourselves. We're taking up our cross and we're following you all the days of our life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pray that this has blessed you. Share it with your friends. Um, subscribe down below. Um, and I just want to thank you guys um, for everything. I'm also going to mention it now. I haven't shared it anywhere. Um, I'm going to be on YouTube here and there, but we actually have connected with um, a another organization where I'll be hosting my videos. It'll be totally free just like YouTube, except it's going to be somewhere else. The thing about YouTube is they can flag my video if they feel like I'm saying hate speech, right? And it's coming and it's getting worse. Um, I, so we partnered with another organization that has a platform where you'll be able to watch our videos and all that other good stuff. But I'm excited about it. So um, I love y'all. If you haven't um, signed up for the Pinky Promise Conference, it's virtual. Go to PinkyPromiseConference.com 2020. And trust me, when you see 2021s, Promo video? Oh, you won't fall out. It, it is so amazing. It's so powerful. It's going to be so good. So this year, next year, I want to see you at my conference. Um, it's literally thousands of women that come together to worship Jesus. We cast out demons. We lay hands. We get healing. Come on. Babies are birthed in the spirit. It is powerful. It's life-changing. And I would love for you to come and be a part of it. All right. I love y'all. Can I have a hug? I miss y'all. I do. I miss y'all. Sorry, I've just been busy and we have a lot of awesome great things that God's doing behind the scenes so I can't share them yet but I will soon enough um but I can't wait to share and I love y'all um talk to you soon bye